Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. We're here to do Karma's Root. I thought I would start back when we first met her <laughs> in this lovely toy shop. And I'm already sad because I can see Rod is alive here and well with little Sebi. Um, but playing through this reminded me, I completely forgot that uh, Emmeline had wrote to Viorica about how cute Fritz is. Not Fritz, good grief. Yeah, Fritz. Yeah, sorry, I got Fritz and Walt confused for a second. And she was like, oh, she, you are as cute as uh, Emma Lane said in their, in their letters. So no wonder she fell for Varg. Good grief. How did I forget that too? I'm so dumb. Anyway, I thought we'd start with our introduction to Karma. And then we'll go to something else. Let's, let's refresh ourselves, shall we, a little bit? I can barely breathe in here. I just want to go back to the palace. No, you don't. Love of your life just walked in. Look at her. Him. Her. Hey. Good morning. Uh. Uh. Mm. Up until the, this point, I'd always considered Mother to be the fairest beauty in the land. The lady that walks in proves me wrong. Her beauty is mesmerizing and clearly without peer. Everyone in the shop is openly staring. Oh, you're early today, ma'am. I have some important errands to run later today. Are the items ready now? Oh, of course. Let me go and fetch them for you. I'll just be one moment, Emmeline. Hmm. Why is she smiling at me? She felt that spark between you two. Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. And just like that, she's gone out of my life. Ah, oh, that lady was beautiful. Right, any girl standing next to her becomes hopelessly ugly by comparison. Who is she? She's new around town. Some say that she's a fairy. A fairy? Man, it's so weird going back to like, snarky Lucette. <laughs> After all that character development, I'm like, man, she really was so snarky. Anyway, okay. So, we got our introduction to Karma. I'll bring you in for when he saves us from some unsavory individuals a little later. So, I'll see you there, guys. Alright, well, the curse has happened and everything now. <laughs> As you can see by our clothes. And we're running away from people trying to take our money. Um... Also, I guess I should mention, I, um, because many of you suggested I turn off the right choice indi indicator, um, because I'll get an achievement for it, I've turned it off for Karma's Root. I figure if I'm going to get a good ending with anybody, it's going to be a narcissist of some kind, so it has to be either Karma or Rumpel. So I'm going to try going for Karma without the good choice indicator and hopefully uh, get to his good ending. Um, so that saying that I'm gonna go left I was gonna go right this time to see what changed but I remember when I went left last time I got a little thing saying you've made a right choice for a character and that was for karma karma's crystal karma's crystal there you go all right let's go left again I cannot let the pain in my feet or my exhaustion stop me if I stop now they will definitely catch me and taking my coins might not be the worst thing they do. Ugh. A dead end. Nowhere left to run now, girl. What do I do? Ooh, who are you gentlemen? This is definitely not how you treat a lady. Huh? Who's there? A shadow looms above us. Before I can blink, a person has jumped down in front of me. A beautiful man. His body acts as a barrier between the two men and me. Awesome. Who are you? Ooh, me. Just a passing gentleman concerned about a damsel in distress. He turns to the men, his expression calm, his eyes flashing dangerously. Now shall I teach you gentlemen a lesson? He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend is the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. Ugh. This is way too much trouble for a little gold. 
Are you alright, my lady? You found her. The boy from yesterday? A little slow, aren't you, kid? Don't call me that. These two know each other? I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they are frozen and on fire. My stomach rumbles, the hunger coming back with a vengeance. My body feels light. Princess! Princess! Lady Parfait will be able to help her. You're right. We need to move now before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Hang in there, princess. Uh, everything is fading. And now another dream. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just skip. And see if anything happens. But I think we're we're good. I have no questions. Whoa. All right. What questions should I ask, being on Karma's route? I'm gonna already say, I have a theory about what his curse is. Just going off the title screen, his is a rose? The most famous fairy tale I can think of is Beauty and the Beast. Which makes me wonder if that's why he dresses as a lady sometimes. It's like, if I dress, if I cross dress, it's like I don't have to turn into a horrible beast monster. <laughs> That's why I'm wondering is his his reasoning for cross dressing, which would be amazing. But I don't know if he if he like is beastly inside or if he's too concerned with beauty and needs to embrace his inner beast. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale, so I'm kind of hoping that's what it is. Um. But anyway, eh, I guess I'll ask. How do I break the curse and what happens if I don't break the curse? And then I'll stop there. How do I break the curse? The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. To break the curse, you must get the second slipper. Complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. What? It's a very easy thing to do. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds? What does that even mean? I wouldn't even know where to start. Take heart, princess. Goodness is innate in everyone. Are you sure that's the case with this one? Dolora, you're not helping. I'm a witch, and I think I have more goodness in my big toe than she has in her entire body. Now you're just being mean. For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass slipper. When you've gotten all three, you'll complete the pair and the curse will break. Simple. I suggest you start by polishing that attitude of yours. What else would you like to know? What happens if I don't break the curse? I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. Hmm. I have no more questions. Three good deeds and I get my life back. Easier said than done. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't she just go to a ball and find a prince? What does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince. It's all so old-fashioned. No fun in that. Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. She's always willing to help others, even when they are cruel to her. Anyway, I have brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We'll be waiting outside. There are some people I'd like you to meet. Hmm. Okay, so we'll skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to skip through that because we're going to run into karma again just now. We're at the marching. Marchin Tavern? Alright. Do 
We gotta find out what this girl is. Anise, right. Sorry, Anise, I forgot about you. Man, this is further along than I thought it was. Come on. Oh boy. Alright, I'll skip a little bit then. Okay, bye, you two. Finally. Disgust, contempt, hatred. People are trying to kill me. Thank you, you two. I become immersed in my thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me. They hate me somehow when I've only ever left the palace twice in my life. How did this happen? The only people who treated me with any respect were Anise, Jurian, and Garland. Is it because they cannot remember who I am? Maybe being in the Martian is not such a good idea. I doubt anyone here wants to help me break my curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer under its weight. Three good deeds. How am I supposed to complete three when I do not know if I can even complete accomplish one? May I join you? I look up and stare in shock at the beautiful lady from the toy shop. Her beauty still manages to take my breath away. What is she doing here? You... you were in the toy shop. Ah uh, yes, I was there picking up some items for a friend. I am humbled you still remember me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Miss Karma. Your name is Karma? A Karma Karma Chameleon? <laughs> chameleon! Whoa! It all comes together! A suitable name for someone as beautiful as me, no? Uh... Karma, your narcissism is going to scare the princess away. Oh. You are that magician boy. Boy. Oh, how appropriate. Boy. Call me that one more time and I'll ruin that pretty face of yours. Ugh! You would hit a lady? How savage. <laughs> uh. Anyway, I'm Waltz Cresswell. I have the Neverland curse. What about you, princess? What's your fairy tale curse? <sighs> Does everyone share what their curse is? We talk about it freely in the Marchen. The whole point is helping each other break our curses, after all. Hard to do that if we keep our fairy tales quiet. He pauses and narrows his eyes slightly. Well, some people keep their fairy tales a secret. He eyes Karma briefly, cocking an eyebrow. The smile never leaves Karma's face. Has anyone managed to break their curse? I've been told that a few have. A few? That's not very reassuring. Well, at least the curses can be broken. I cannot particularly say that reassures me, either. What ails you, darling? Is it your curse? You can talk to us about it. Tell us what it is. Cinderella. Oh, goodness! Cinderella? That explains the nature of your curse. Only it's been reversed, hasn't it? Riches to rags. That's one way of putting it. Karma, you're not helping. You really are better off ignoring him, Princess. He mostly speaks nonsense. Uh, he? Uh, mm. Princess? <laughs> Alright, you're here to save me from, uh, from karma. I wonder if she thought about it again. Nope. She didn't, didn't think about it. Rod! I need to skip through you, Rod. I'm sorry. I guess I'll pick a different option. You hate me. You have no right to start acting the victim now. Not when you treated my family with such disrespect. The only reason I didn't say anything before is because Emmeline didn't want me to. Uh, I'm happier too now that you're gone. I don't want to pretend to like you anymore. Oh gosh, my heart. Rod, don't say that. We were in love once. Oh my goodness. That's so sad. My good old Rumple. 
I kind of want to throw the tray at him. I think I'm going to have to do that for his root anyway, but I just kind of want to get it out of my system now. Can I throw the tray at him? I'm tempted to let you. Feisty as well? Oh, be still, my beating heart. Huh? You... <laughs> yep, definitely going with that on his route. <laughs> uh, oops. I need to do the narcissist meeting. Sorry, that's the only reason I'm keeping it. I will never understand, Parfait. This amorous waste of space is about as useful as karma. Did someone say my name? I've returned. Speak of the devil. Did you miss me? Karma had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had something very important to take care of. Walt trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in his arms. Why am I carrying these? Because you made me run that errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I'm going to drop them now. Those boxes contain very important contents. Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to see you survive the trip, Waltz. Thank you, Anise. Uh. So, this is our new housemate. We have not had the opportunity to meet. I am... Uh... The best thing. The best thing. We are all surprised when Rumpel suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand. My life before this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you have entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful, blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly than you. Uh. I am Rumple, my sweet. Let us talk of marriage. I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumple away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Answer, my angel. I beg of you. <laughs> Keep. Say the word, and it is done. Your filthy hands off of me. Deck. Ow! Not again. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Go on, lad. Give him a good beating. The one you gave to me. My queen, there is no need for violence. What did you call me? Please calm down. Rumble is still recovering. What is going on? Karma's a man. It doesn't take kindly to being flirted with. Or proposed to. Uh, she... Is a man?! But your voice, your face, your breasts. Ow! That's what you're focusing on, pervert. I worship all aspects of the female form, but my particular favorite has always been... Ow! Do yourself a favor and shut up. I never would have known. But why would he do this? Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Is it because of your curse? Yes. I... I am undone. My heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. For those that can hear the music of their heart like I, it takes only a look to fall madly, irretrievably in love. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. Huh. The Martian attracts all sorts, doesn't it? And on that note, <laughs> I think we'll fast forward to our first choice. I've seen everything about Karma that I wanted to see again. Whom should I ask for help? Rod. Nope. Karma! Alright, let's ask Karma. I find Karma sitting quietly at the bar. I thought he was a picture of elegance when I saw him at the toy shop, but he's really just conceited. I walk over to where he is. Oh, Princess Lucette. 
You look stunning as always in your work clothing. He must be mocking me, but it does not matter. I am here because I want you to teach me about goodness. Not even a compliment in return? I'm rather offended. <sighs> Relax, princess. I'm just teasing you. I noticed. Now can you answer my question? Princess, you do so wound me. This is going nowhere. Maybe I should ask someone else. <laughs> Sweat. Princess, wait. You made the right decision in coming to me for help, I assure you. Hmm. The best people, Princess, look beautiful. The way you look outside has to match what you have inside. Yeah, okay, so he's still obsessed with beauty, just like the prince was in Beauty and the Beast. But he had a beastly personality. How is that supposed to help me? Are you implying that I'm not beautiful? Of course not! I only suggest that you smile more often. Smiling will not help me accomplish a good deed. And smiling has nothing to do with beauty. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's not true at all. People who are beautiful smile all the time. Like myself. He's not helping at all. Don't give me that look, darling. A real smile lifts the heart and takes stress off the mind. And? Well, in order to do good, you must first change yourself. Make yourself more beautiful on the outside and the inside. I really don't know why I came to him for advice. It's his root. But what did I expect from such a flamboyant man? He is as shallow as a puddle of water. <laughs> Damn. Harsh truth. There's dirt on the floor again. Actually, I just need to fast forward to the next, uh... To the next, who should I ask for help from today? Karma again, against my better judgment. I find Karma sitting at one of the tables looking out a window. You're being quiet today? What a rare sight. Oh, princess. Why would you be so surprised to see me? Because it is an honor every time you visit me. Have you come for my advice? I want you to tell me how to do a good deed. My, my, so straightforward. What is he talking about? It's really simple. You just do something without strings attached. No strings attached? Yes. You do something for someone without asking them to pay you back. It is hard to wrap my head around doing such a thing. Why would I do something without needing to? Have you done such a thing for someone before? Uh, of course I have, princess. That was a long pause. It was only a thoughtful one. Right. Is that all? I believe so. That tidbit of wisdom ought to serve you well. That was at least somewhat helpful. A month has passed. I guess I'll skip for a bit and see if anything's changed. Had our dream again. Who am I going to ask for help from? Those beautiful green eyes that stare into my soul. Chapter 3, Secret Practices. Ooh, how scandalous. <laughs> I decide to go search for karma as soon as I am done with Mr. Broom. Or as soon as it is done with me, as the case is. He should be sitting at the bar or at a table. I find him at the usual table, talking to Waltz who has his hands on a box. Why, if it isn't the princess? Lovely morning, isn't it? It is the same as any other. Nonsense. Every morning brings new opportunities. Right, Waltz? I guess so. Every day there's another chance for a good deed, princess. Right. No clever comments today, princess. I do so enjoy them. Maybe coming to Karma was a bad idea. I would love to stay and offer advice, but Waltz and I better be off. We do have work to do. You mean that you're going to put me to work? Work? Parfait asked us to pick up some provisions for the tavern. She asked us, but in the end it will be me carrying everything. You'd make a lady carry everything. Karma suddenly stops and whirls to look at me with wide eyes. Oh! I 
cannot say that I like the glimmer in his eyes. How would you like to help Princess Lucette? I'm sure this would count as one of your good deeds. I'm pretty sure that's not how this works. Oh, Waltz, you're no fun. Helping Karma carry things does not sound pleasant, but... I'll go. Uh... Truly? Oh my! Waltz, it seems I will not be requiring your assistance today. Princess, are you sure? Perhaps this might be considered good. Besides, I'll finally get to leave this place for the first time since I've been here. I'm sure. Okay. Take good care of the princess, Karma. Of course. For the rest of the day, Karma takes me to different shops around the town, reading off of a long list and giving me the coins to buy things. I notice that the townspeople treat me nicely when the two of us are together. I do not understand why everyone likes Miss Karma so much, but maybe it is because they do not really know him. We stop in the middle of the town and sit at a small cafe on the outskirts to take a break. Miss Karma is still the picture of elegance. It'd be funny, actually, if people really hated Karma before he started cross-dressing. <laughs> they like Miss Karma, but not Mr. Karma. Why do you dress like a woman? Uh, darling, not so loud. Why is this even a secret? It's related to my curse. I mentioned that before, didn't I? <sighs> what was your curse again? Karma was one of the only people at the tavern who did not share what his curse was. Is knowing my curse even so important? You know what my curse is, so tell me what yours is. You dragged me around town to help you carry your things. But princess, those weren't even my things. They weren't mine either. Okay, I will tell you, though it is very sad. I do not think a curse is meant to be a happy thing. The beauty's curse, yes! I have the beauty's curse. It is what forces people to fall in love with me every time they see my handsome face. Really? Is that really a curse? That does not seem awful at all. Terrible, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it, it can be. Because if everyone just falls in love with your face, you, uh, you never know when someone loves you for reals. The personality. Beauty and the Beast is all about not judging a book by its cover and looking at the inner person. So you know what? It's terrible. Uh, what? Most people don't agree with me. It does not make sense for a witch to cast a good curse on you. Hmm, I guess it doesn't, does it? Hmm. Thank you, Princess Lucette. Why is he thanking me? Still, it feels like I am missing something. Is that really the entirety of his curse? But don't people fall in love with you when you are a woman as well? No, princess. That love is admiration or appreciation. Sometimes lust. And when you're a man? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Poor karma. I mean, I didn't swarm to him. They swarm to me like moths to light. It becomes suffocating. Whom does it affect? The curse only affects women. It is a condition of the curse that they be a woman and that I be a man. It's part of the fairy tale. Oh? Which fairy tale? The one with... Oh. Karma suddenly stands up and points at a man selling red apple-like candies. He pulls me over, insisting that we try one. You sneaky, sneaky person. I try to bring up the subject of the curse again, but to no avail. Karma somehow manages to be distracted for the rest of the day and is able to effectively dodge my questions. Is Karma hiding something from me? Why would he? I thought pairing up meant helping each other break our curses. Does he not want to break his curse? Not again. Oh, thank you so much, Lucette. We were in dire need of these supplies. I supervised her well, didn't I? Of course, dear. He did not do anything. Oh, princess, you wound me. It's the truth. But we had that nice talk. You avoided half of my questions. Ugh. Oh. Carmel has had an exasperated sigh that becomes a very forced yawn. Ah, oh, I'm 
going to bed. Today has been a tiring day. Please excuse me, darlings. Sleep well. Sleep well, Karma. Karma walks away, leaving me alone with Parfait. He's not so bad, you know. I do not know why I agreed to work with him. Give him a chance, Lucette. I did not get a single good deed today. It's not just about the act, but about the intentions. Uh, did Karma just use me, then? I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Tonight I will rethink my partnership. Oh dear.